I can't celebrate Father's Day, but you can. You can buy your dad something as black and edgy as this rich backpack, so he can carry his hopes and dreams in there. Or a duffel bag. I need one of those to carry my money. But the real star of the rich are the rich wallets. This wallet, for example, is made of carbon fiber. Totally black. Just how I like it. I might buy one for myself. Because it's black. It's light, sleek, and industrial. It'll fit smoothly in any utility belt. It can hold 12 cards plus cash. So it can definitely hold your bad credit cards. With 30,000 five-star reviews, the wallet has styles including carbon fiber and burnt titanium, as well as RFID blocking. No one's pickpocketing Batman. Go to rich.com slash chadnation and use code chadnation to get 10% off your order with free worldwide shipping and returns. That's right. One more time because Robin wasn't paying attention. Sorry. Go to rich.com slash chadnation and use code chadnation. If you thought DC was only trying to figure out what to do with the DCEU, you're dead wrong. DC also had no idea what to do with its animated movies. So this year they're like, all right, let's release another new movie and kill it. <laughs> do any of you remember Flashpoint? If you're a fan of DC animated movies, you probably do. It's easily one of their best films, standing alongside The Dark Knight Returns and Under the Red Hood, etc. So what Flashpoint actually did is create a DC animated movie universe, which kicked off with Justice League War. Every single movie that comes after this film that has the art style by Phil Barassa is pretty much in this universe. The movies look cool and they're voiced well, the only issue is that if you look at how much money these movies have made, the movies that are completely original and not based on any universe and are more visually similar to the art style of the comics they come from actually earn more money than properties that fall under the DC animated movie universe. And these movies are getting less and less money and holy crap what do we do scream the DC execs? Well if the series isn't getting us money, let's just fucking kill it baby. And thus we got Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. The movie is also a Justice League Dark movie because if you're gonna end this all baby, you gotta end it with a bang. And the Dark subtitle allows for an R rating. I'm gonna be completely transparent here, I went into this film thinking it was going to be a disaster because I saw a clip on Twitter where every character you know and love is getting brutally murdered. So how is the actual movie though? Well, it was both amazing and dog shit at the same time, which is, which is really hard to do actually. Let me explain. The film is set up as the finale. Everything that's been set up in these DC animated movies since Flashpoint has led to this, and it shows. Darkseid is a serious threat, the world is in genuine peril, and all our heroes are in disarray. It's like Endgame. The heroes lose, and instead of wanting to bring everyone back, Justice League Dark Apocalypse War, man what a long title, has our heroes fight to preserve the planet as Darkseid is extracting the magma from the Earth's core. It's a bit whack, but okay. To be all positive here, the pacing of this film is friggin' fantastic. It's constantly engaging and the voice acting is pretty damn great. You feel like shit watching it, which is a plus, I guess, but it's also a massive negative, which we'll get to later. Let me also point out that Damian Wayne is no longer annoying as hell. He's actually pretty cool and competent for once. And props because I am so tired of douchey child Damian. I think what I seriously love most about this movie is that everyone feels really desperate. Everyone's constantly on edge. I like the idea of our greatest heroes either being killed or indoctrinated, and I love how Batman has a pretty small role for once. There's a few more positives, there's a lot of characters in the film, yeah sure, it's engaging, but to be honest, the least a movie can do is be engaging. That's the point. For me, there's just so much stuff that brings this film down from being great to just, eh. Like I watched this movie in complete concentration, alone, taking everything in, and once it ended, I was just staring at the credits, numb. Like what had I just watched? What was the point? Well, the point is to kill the DC animated movie universe. The film is needlessly edgy, like this video. Characters curse, and I guess that's supposed to be funny. Oh, for fuck's sake. Azeroth, Metreon, Sintos! Like in the movie, instead of saying something actually cool or something epic like Booyah, Cyborg's last words, and I mean last words as he's gonna die, are these. Looks like I get the last word. Suck it, bitches. Fuck you! And... What are you gonna do now? Are you gonna hit me? You're not worth the trouble it would take to hit you! I would say it's hard to explain, but it's not. It's very easy to realize why this movie feels empty, and that's because it has no real message of any kind. The film was made with the intention of killing everything. The ending was already set a certain way, and if the point of your creation is to destroy your creation, then why should people care? 
It all comes down to how the film treats its own universe. The universe has 15 movies, which birthed all of these magnificent characters, and sure, not all of them were great, but hell yeah, they exist. Even Fast and Furious cares more about its prior movies than this film. So to just say, oh, Hal Jordan? Green Lantern? One of the characters that started this entire universe with Justice League War? Yeah, he dies in a still frame. A still frame. Great writing. The film kills off a ton of characters for no other reason but shock value. They don't die valiantly. They're cattle driven to slaughter. The film has glimpses of hope, but it's always overshadowed by pointless death and shock value garbage. Nightwing is stabbed through the chest. Wonder Woman has an arm ripped off, and one of the worst offenses is when Lady Shiva is just running around in a corridor with all the other heroes, and then someone shoots her, and we see her headshot right in front of us. She just dies right there. Wow, great. At least Robin says rest well, Shiva, and closes her eyes. No other hero gets a goodbye. At least Raven is given amazing characterization and purpose. I love me some Raven, man, and Superman was actually interesting and flawed, but still remained hopeful. That was some good shit. So why on earth did they decide to make this film pretty much DC's Ultimatum. If you didn't know, the Marvel Comics Ultimate Universe had this event called Ultimatum, which was created to pretty much relaunch the Ultimate Comics with new characters and stories, so in with the new, out with the old, sure. But this idea was executed really badly. An absolute dumpster fire, Ultimatum is hated by loads of fans. Characters die for the sake of just dying, and similarly in Apocalypse War, characters die to just fill runtime. I mentioned earlier, Nightwing is stabbed. Well, guess what? Damien actually revives him with the Lazarus Pit, and he's still alive! Just, you know, insane. Isn't that crazy? Now I'm excited to see how the story uses that plot point. Well, guess what happens? Nothing. Nothing happens. What was the point? Uh, oh, I know. I remember. I just forgot. It's supposed to shock you. Haha, <laughs> wow. You know what that means, right? It means that heroes like Zatanna, Blue Beetle, Green Lantern, and not just Hal Jordan, but Jon Stewart and Guy Gardner too, are all reduced to something as lazy and pathetic as a jump scare. I don't mind. People can like and love this movie. That's totally cool. I personally think it's fine. The movie is genuinely fantastic at times and trash at times, which makes it an eh movie for me. On the thing I was talking about earlier, how you feel like shit watching it, yeah, it's just not pleasant. And I get that. I do, for the most part. But the thing is that it just becomes gratuitous. There's not really a point. There isn't really a message you can take away from all of it. The film ends with the Flash just having to reverse time again and create another Flashpoint. Because the Earth is doomed and about a billion people will die. So all these relationships we've made, Raven and Damien finally getting together, you know, all the relationships since Justice League War, nah. It's rewind time. You kill so many characters and have the world get wrecked, but damn, at least end on a positive note, man. If you ended at a positive note, that means that there could have been a message of like, oh, if things get hard, you can still try and hope will prevail or something like that, but no. The ending is basically, nope, everything's bad. It just left a bad taste in my mouth. I know I'm simplifying a lot of this movie, and I feel like in the comments there might be people who defend it, and I mean, that's fine, you can like the movie, but honestly, it doesn't even matter. How is the DC animated movie universe? Pretty cool. It's nice to have continuity. And how is it killed? Miserably. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching the video. I'm making an animated series called Interstellar Ranger Commence. Check out the trailer if you're interested. Link in the description. I want to thank all my patrons. You guys and gals are amazing. Thank you so much for supporting me, and thank you, Chads, for watching. If you want to become part of the Chad family, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, and you'll instantly have someone called Chad visit you at your door and dab on you. That is absolutely true. I easily have the power to do that. That's a joke. Please don't sue me. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope hope you come back to the table.